Glory to God. Happy Sabbath. We're about to work with the attorney formations in the church. I'm passing that on. And we are just thanking to God to be here once again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When Dick and I was coming over, we saw all these crazy drivers. Thank God for getting us here safely. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we gather here today in thy glorious presence, please fill our hearts with your love. Oh, God, to be to God. Fill our heart with your love and let your Holy Spirit just fill this temple today. Glory. Hallelujah. You know our needs, Father, and we trust you. And we trust you will bless us today well, as we gather to worship in spirit and truth. Have thy way. Let your spirit move in today. Lord God, somebody need to be healed. Let them know you're still a healing bomb in Gilead. Lord God, somebody need to be uplifted and encouraged. Let them know that you got the best. healing flow through the place today. Lord, uplift. Well, somebody needs to be uplifted. Well, somebody may need to be encouraged. Encouraged, Lord. Somebody may need to be admonished. Let your admonition go forth with love and mercy. Whatever we need, Lord, we trust you to provide. In Jesus' name, we pray and thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are praising God for the opportunity in this house once again. God is good. Do you know that God is good? Do you know God has a plan for you yeah. right now today? You're not here just by happenstance. I thank God you are here, but God has a purpose for you being here today. Yeah. And I pray that before we leave, we are all closer and stronger in our Christian walk. Hallelujah. Yeah. You don't say it, don't play fair. Yeah. So we just got to be prepared to yeah. give them a double black eye. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We we want to uh, thank God for blessing the saints to come. Thank God for the sister Anderson being with us today. And we just love you. We thank God for you. We love you, Turning Point. And we thank God. We want to welcome those who join us from week to week via our uh, recast. We thank you for joining us. And we thank you members who are here. Thank God for those who's on their way. And perhaps some won't make it, but we are still lifting them up, praying that all is well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, oh, Heavenly Father, I ask you to put your words into my mouth. And let your Holy Spirit Guide me as I proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, please put your angels on post to protect us as your word goes forth. And, Father, glorify yourself through me. And let those who are listening hear your word. And Lord, let them respond to your word. Oh, Holy Spirit, we ask that your spirit move through this place today. And for those that will listen, those that will hear the recast, we are praying, Father, that someone's heart will be touched. And those that seek a church home will seek to be a part of this family. And those who may need to recommit or just solidify their walk, today will be the day for them. Lord God, you know us. You know everything about us. And we just empty ourselves. Lord God, I, I, I move myself out the way. I yield myself to you. Have your way. Speak, Lord, to me and through me to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for being here. And I thank God for this song Ella Sorrell chose because walking this Christian walk is not an easy walk. 
but it's a joyful walk when you are close to Christ's righteousness. The word of God says in Ephesians chapter 1, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. You may be um, here for considering or speak on the subject. Who are we? This is part two. And our subtopic it is all about Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Who are we? Part two. It's all about Jesus. I want to thank God for the privilege given to be here once again. Thank God for the elders of this house. Elder Jack Sorrell, Elder Monica Sorrell, and Elder Tanya Blevins. Thank God for our deacon on the keyboard over there. Our deaconess that are here. Thank God for each of you that are here, my sisters and brothers in Christ. Who are we? This is part two. Last week we focus on our Foundation scripture and the mission for our church that was found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Can you mind tell me those three words we used last week? It was three points we made. You might know the first one? Go, go. go teach, teach and, baptize. and baptize. Amen, amen, thank you. So today, we're continuing to answer that important question, who are we? Well, we are a Christian fellowship whose faith is grounded in the entire Bible and centered on Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and rose from the grave, who is now ministering in the heavenly sanctuary, and he is soon to return to redeem his people to take us to our heavenly home. So are you ready? Are you making preparation? You know, like, uh, when you get ready to go on a trip, most people start packing and getting things together before the day they depart. And since we know that Jesus has gone away to prepare a place for those who love him and those who endure to the end, the question is, are you Preparing for his return. Who are we? It's all about Jesus. The scripture in both the Old and New Testament record, present a record of Jesus' creative and saving power. Jesus Christ, God's son, became human through his mother Mary as he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, young people, fully God, yet lived and experienced temptation as a human being who perfectly exemplified the righteousness and love of God. I say it's all about Jesus. We can't even breathe without Jesus breathing his breath on us. Jesus is the sustainer of life. It is only through Jesus we can receive eternal life. After all, Jesus died so that we might be restored back to a right relationship with God the Father since sin had separated us. It is all about Jesus, who is our servant king, who draws us back into the family of God and gives us his indwelling spirit to live victoriously here in this life. I don't care how much money you mass and fame and power or prestige or anything else, it's all for naught if you don't know Jesus. Because you can't take money to heaven. Money won't buy you a ticket to heaven. Money can't do anything for your eternal soul, your eternal life. Now, we need money. I'm not speaking against money. 
But I'm saying we have to get our priority. Who are we? It's all about Jesus. Today, my sisters and brothers, I submit and will prove in the scriptures that through Jesus, all things were created and he is our Savior. All right, what, what is our mission today? To prove that all things were created through Jesus and that he's our Savior. What is our mission? All right. Now, you hold me to that. If I get to the end, you ain't not done that. You need to call me the pastor. You didn't do, get your mission accomplished. All right. Turn with me to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. And those who have the Bible should be hard to find. Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. It's the first book in the Bible, the first uh, scripture, first verse in the Bible. And all of us probably know it because we've been around church for a while. Genesis, chapter 1. It says, in the beginning, who? God, God created what? Yeah. The heaven and the earth. All right? So we need to hold on to the heaven and the earth. We're going to come back to that. Let's flip over to Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. So right now, we know that in the beginning, God created what? The heavens and the earth. And we know now it's all finished. But we go back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. So I submit to you, all of creation was made by God. Now let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1. God in verse 1 is a plural word for God, Elohim. Elohim. So we're dealing with more than one person. Since it's plural, there has to be more than one person, right? Now, in the beginning, God, Elohim, more than one person, uh, created, is, is involved in this creation act. So, if you were to go throughout the first chapter of Genesis, you will read down to the whole chapter, you will see that it said, God said, God said. In other words, Elohim, Elohim. Now, let us look close at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I hope you're taking notes. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. The word says, and God said, let us make man in our own image. All right? Is us singular or plural? Plural. What about our? Is that singular or plural? Plural. Okay, thank you. Don't be afraid. It's not a trick question. Okay, so we, got, we have us and we have our. They both are plural. But that other word, image, is image singular or plural? Singular, that's right. So we got us and we got our, both are plural. And then we got singular, image is singular. So God says, let us, Elohim says, let us make man in our own image. Now, this us and this our, you got God the Father, got God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's that us, that's our our. But they have one image, and that image is divinity. You got it? That's us. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, that's us, and that's our. But you have one image, and that is divinity. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So God, L-O-M, is plural. But the word his, is that singular or plural? Single. Thank you. His is singular. And so this tells me 
that his, one of the us, is the one we're talking about. We're going to find out who that one is, who's this his, this one of the us in our own image. So, in other words, one of the us, our one of the hour, remember Genesis 1 uh, and, and, and uh, 20, uh, 1 and 20. Six. Yeah. One in 20, 20, uh, 6 says, and God said, let us make man in our own image. So we got the one, and we got we got that us, and we got that our. So one of the us, that he, actually did the creation. But they were all behind. It. Now, if you're looking at Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, God created man in his own image. So you have many and you have one. And that's not a contradiction. It's just like I'm Pastor Annette. You're Deacon Garner. You're Elder Blevin, Elder Monica, Elder Sorrell, Deacon Furry, Deacon Lane, Deacon Garner, and the list goes on and on and on. But we are all one body. Many members, but one body. We are all a part of turning point. We all are different, got different personality. We all are different, but we're one, one body. What is our subject today? Who are we? Who are we? And what is our subtitle? It's, it's all about Jesus, thank you. We are nothing without Jesus. Now, in Genesis chapter one, verse 27, we want to see who is this he. It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him. Who is this he? Now, if you said Jesus, you're correct. But let's see if God, the Father, agrees with us. Okay? And if you're looking at the word, most people don't struggle with acknowledging God has always existed. Because after all, Psalms 93 verse 2 tells us that thy throne is established of old, that are from everlasting to everlasting. So most people can acknowledge and accept that God has always been and God the Father is divine since he's always existed. But people sometimes struggle with acknowledging Jesus, Deacon Gunner, divinity, that he's always existed, that he's never had a beginning. Many people have a problem with Jesus because it said he was born of a bird. In other words, they try to say he was created or he was made. So he has a beginning. He has not always existed. Therefore, he cannot be eternal or everlasting. Well, I trust God's word. And that's why Jesus refers to himself as I am. Meaning, he is the self-existing one. Jesus has always been he always is, and he always will be. But don't, you don't have to take my word, but let's see what God the Father has to say about Jesus and his divinity and his creative power. Surely, we can trust God, the Father's word. Don't you think so? Okay. Well, I invite you to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. And listen to what the Father says. Now read with me. We're going to read Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. Read with me. Those who have your Bible, I want you to read with me. I read audibly with the, with the mic so people that listen to the search can, can hear distinctly. But I really want you to read with me. You ready to read? Are you there? Amen. And we're looking at the King James Version, and you need a little more time, so I'm still searching away, or amen, what do you want to say? Let me know, wait a little longer. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Let us read. God, who at sundry times, diving manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by the his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, 
who bring the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the Majesty on high. Is there any person that's talking about Jesus? There's no person. This is Jesus. Now, this is God talking now. I just want you to understand that this is God's talking, and he's speaking to his son, Jesus. And God says to his son that he's appointed him heir of all things. And then God goes on and say, by whom? By my son who has made the worlds. So I submit to you that all things were created through Jesus, by Jesus. And so we see here that God is talking about his son, Jesus Christ. God said he sent his son, Jesus, to die for us. And he tells us that the son, Jesus Christ, was the express image of his glory, the brightness equal with God and the Father, the brightness of Jesus equal God the Father. So the God the Father and God the Son brighten it equal. In other words, he's already exists. He's right there with his Father. And, and there's some interesting thing in this passage of Scripture. He says, by whom also he made the worlds. Then he goes on and says, when he had by himself purged our sin, sat down on the right hand of the majesty. So this time I had Jesus died and his blood and, and shed his blood for you and for me. And through the shedding of his blood, our sins are purged away. Amen, amen. So, all right, uh, we got that understanding that good, this God is talking to his son. God he says, spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed. This is God said, I appointed my son to be heir of everything. And now he's heir, but he, all by, the, he, by him, he made the world. Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. The word says, But unto the Son, he says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Now, this is God's talking. And so, we're listening to the Father. And he says to the son, so what is God the Father saying to us in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8? We learn that he, he says the son has what? A throne. That's right. His son has a throne. Now how long does his son's throne last? Forever. That's right. What else does the son have? A scepter of righteousness. Right. In his right hand. So the Father says, the Father, God Almighty, has told us that his Son, Jesus Christ, has a throne. And his throne is eternal. And out of his throne is eternal, he has a sceptical, the symbol, the our expression of that throne is righteousness. Jesus Christ has a throne. And it's an eternal throne. And he has a scepter. And in his right hand, that scepter is of righteousness. Now, say in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8. What is the last word in that verse? Kingdom. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. So the Father told us that his son has a kingdom. And that kingdom has a throne on which the son sits. And this, uh, on the sons, in the son's right hand is a sceptre of righteousness. And it will reign forever and ever. There is no ending to his kingdom. That's what God the Father said. So this is what the Father says about his son, Jesus Christ. So I trust God. I trust the Father's word. Do you trust his word? Amen. So, what else does the Father say to us? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9, the word says, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. 
So we see here that Jesus, by the testimony of his Father, God Almighty, hates sin. I didn't say that. That's what God says about his son. So until we, my sisters and brothers, hate sin, we'll continue to find ourselves falling into sin. But Jesus loves you. He loves me, but he hates the sin. And he wants to release us from the sin. He wants to help us to be strong so we won't keep being weak and falling into sin. And so often, we forget this attribute of Jesus, the Son, God the Son, that he hates sin. Oh yeah, we, we want to make Jesus nice and accept our wrong, doing we can go to him and everything. We can. But he wants us to understand that we repeatedly, consistently disobey his will of our life. He is not pleased with that. Jesus tells us today that he loves us. He loves you. He loves you. He loves me. But he hates the sin that's hidden in our lives. Jesus reminds us today that whatever he hates, so does his father. Whatever Jesus hates, so does his father, because they are both one. And we know by God's own testimony that Jesus hates sin. So now let us go to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. Remember I told you I was going to prove in scripture that all things were created by Jesus. So Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. This still, the father is still talking. Let us read Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10 together. And remember, this is God the Father that's speaking. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10 says, And thy Lord, in the beginning, has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hand. So if you will go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, you will see in Genesis 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10, it tells us who is the created so it says. This person who, who did the creation is identified in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10. This is God's talking. He's talking to his son, that thy Lord in the beginning has laid the foundation. And in Genesis 1.1 1, 1, it says, in the beginning God created. So I told you Elohim me all three. But that he, down in, in verse 26, was talking about Jesus Christ. So what is the name of that person uh, that uh, is, did this create, that created the world and that was identified here in Hebrews 1.10 says, and thou Lord in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth. Who is that person? Who's that person? Jesus Christ. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the person who created the heavens and the earth. God, the Father, is speaking to the Son. And that Son is Jesus Christ. And Jesus and the Father also said to the Son in Hebrews 1.10 that you existed with me before time again. Because he said in Hebrews 1.10, Thou Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth. So he laid the foundation of the earth. He was there before it all started. That's the point being made. And it is a, a the heaven of the works of his hand. He created the heaven. So through Jesus, the character of God is revealed. The salvation of humanity is accomplished and the world is judged. Who are we? We are a local congregation who believe that salvation is a God-free gift. We believe that salvation is God's free gift to us through his son, Jesus Christ. But we must accept this free gift of salvation in order to receive it. It's no different. Your parents or somebody can give you a gift, but if you never accept that gift, it's, you don't have it. You can't take advantage of it. So God has given Jesus Christ to us salvation 
as a free gift to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And it's only when we accept Jesus as our Savior, we are saved by grace, through faith, and our spiritual blessings are made secure in heaven through Jesus Christ. And as we look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, I'm almost finished. The word says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all, not some, not most, not many, but all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. See, we're not an afterthought. Praise God. Some people want to make you think that you're nobody. Hey, this brother that you know you somebody. God has chosen you. Now you got to receive it. But he wants you that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So God, my sisters and brothers, turning point. God is ready to accelerate the pouring out all spiritual blessings through his son, Jesus Christ. The question is, turning point, are we ready to receive these spiritual blessings? Are we ready to live? Are we ready to walk and to go forth in heavenly places? Are we? God is ready to move this church forward to greater blessings and alignment in, spiritual, in the spiritual realm. That's what God wants to do. He's ready. He's waiting on us. God is determined to bless us through all spiritual blessings. He's ready to dispense all spiritual blessings and untold blessings through his son, Jesus Christ. To everyone who are united with his son. It's just not us. Anybody that accepts Jesus as their Savior, anybody that yields their heart to God, God is ready to do an overflow. He's ready to accelerate pouring out blessings. God is ready to empower us through his son to be holy and blameless in his sight. We must align our will with God's will. We must align our steps with Jesus' steps and move into position to receive our blessings right now. I'm reminded of Genesis chapter 26, verse 12, where the word says, Isaac sold, that's Abraham's son Isaac, in the land, and received in the same year an hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. I want you to understand what I'm saying. Typically, when you store something new, you don't get a hundredfold, you don't get the full growth of it in that first year of that first harvest. So I stand here and tell you today, my sisters and brothers, with the gifting God has placed in your hand, in your hand, in your hand, in my hand, God is saying, whatever we sow in faith, he will bless it a hundredfold. Whatever we sow in faith, he will bless it a hundredfold. So I tell you today, my sisters and brothers, don't stop sowing. Don't stop sowing your time in the work of God. Don't stop sowing your talent for God's glory. Don't stop sowing your skills. Don't stop sowing your knowledge. Don't stop sowing your influence. Don't stop sowing your love and passion. Some people may want to make you think that you're weak because you can love and you, you're so giving and so uh, caring. And they are hard-hearted. Don't let them stop you from sowing. Hallelujah. Don't stop sowing your resources. God is pouring out his glorious grace. God is pouring out his kindness. God is pouring out his wisdom. God is pouring out his understanding. Hallelujah. I said God is pouring out his forgiveness. God is pouring out his spiritual blessings. He want to pour out on you. He want to pour out on this work here. God is pouring out his amazing love. God is pouring out all his 
spiritual gift of the Holy Spirit. And God is ready to pour his spiritual inheritance for you and for me. Now is the accepted time to be blessed abundantly. I said it's all about Jesus. So whatever you do, make sure Jesus is at the center of it. Wherever you go, wherever you go, make sure Jesus it can go there with you. Whatever you do, make sure it's bringing glory and honor to Jesus. Whatever you're thinking, make sure it's elevating Jesus. I said all about Jesus. I want you to understand that whatever we do, who are we? We are people that's trusting Jesus. We are people that are rooted and grounded in the work of God. Hallelujah. I said, who are we? We are people that's trusting God. We are people that are ready for God to pour the spiritual blessing, all the spiritual blessing. But we got to line up. We can't allow ourselves to stop what God wants to do to us. We can't allow fear. We can't allow doubt. We can't even allow us not being in tune to the Holy Spirit. I say it's all about Jesus. Jesus has one of the things he wants to do through you and for you. Are you ready to receive your spiritual blessing? Are you ready to go to the next level? Are you ready to walk in heavenly places? Are you ready to give God your first heart? Are you ready to be used by God? If you're ready to be used by God, I dare you to begin to praise him right now. I dare you to begin to look up to the heaven and begin to thank God for what he's already done. I dare you to begin to say, Lord God, I don't understand some of my fight, but I'm willing to trust you because I really you created me to do something, Jesus. I realize you created me for a purpose. I realize you want to give spiritual blessings to me. You want to overflow me with great blessing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who are we? It's all about Jesus. No matter what we're facing, no matter how difficult it may be or how insurmountable it may seem, or even how dark or how fearful or lonely your journey may seem. Jesus can see you through. Jesus standing here today with outstretched arms. And he's saying today to you and to me, abide in me. Come unto me. Believe in me. Follow me. Learn of me. Look up unto me. If you are ready to receive all of your spiritual blessings, you're ready. You realize that there are more to life than what you're enjoying right now. And you realize that there's more for you to do. If you're ready to embark on a new chapter, ready to walk and dwell in heavenly places and experience overflow spiritual blessings, then stand on your feet with me and repeat this simple prayer, the short little prayer. And if you can't stand, you can raise your hand if that's your desire. I'm gonna give you a minute to think about it. This is responding to Jesus invitation. Jesus said abide in me. Come unto me. No matter how far you found yourself away, come to me. Believe in me. Follow me. Learn of me. Look unto me. And that's what you are responding to. Then Jesus, just a simple prayer. Jesus, please help me to surrender my heart to you day by day. Help me to accept your invitation. Help me to cut out some time each day in my life to expose myself to you, Lord Jesus, so that you can remove the cancer of sin in every spot in my life. Lord, Pour out your accelerated spiritual blessings right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's it. You may be seated.
and you meant that, God is going to do that. God is ready to pour out abundant blessings. And he want to bless you spiritually. Now that don't mean he won't bless you other ways either. But God got great work he want to do through each one of us. Young people, you don't church people lives that I can't touch. So God got to work with each one of us. Then you lined up, people, you can reach. I will be able to reach. Lillian, Christina, all of us, Christina. Christina, all of us. We got a work to do. God is no respectful person. He want to use each one of us. So the, the, the question today, who are we? It's all about Jesus. And if that's how you feel, then you just say, Lord, here I am. In spite of my fear, in spite of what I don't have and can't do, here I am. I'm willing to be used by you. And perhaps there's someone listening to the message today. And you'll search for a church home. Search no further. Call us at 1-866-395-6873. That's 1-866-395-6873. And we'd be happy to tell you how to become part of our church family. If you're seeking prayer and adventure, call our prayer line and say no, 1-866-395-6873. But we invite you to just trust Jesus. Jesus says, abide in him. How do you abide in Jesus? By studying his word. By spending time with him. And if you spend time with him, You'll be able to meditate on his word. You'll be able to follow him. Because now you're learning him and you're looking to him. And he will strengthen you. He will not fail you. He will not forsake you. So we thank you for coming today. Thank you for tuning in. And we want to send a special uh, uh, emphasis on our service next week. Our youth service. Those on the internet, listen, come join us. And those of you local, join us next Saturday for our Church and Youth Day starting at 11 o'clock. Norma Collins is our guest speaker. The young people, we want you to bring guests with you. We want you to be here too. 